This is a case of a young woman who presented with left leg varicose veins, vulvo varices, and hemorrhoids. Uh, here we're uh, performing an ascending venogram through a left femoral approach. Uh, we do all access using ultrasound guidance. Here's a nice depiction of the pulsatile artery with the vein medial to this. It's important always uh, to be able to see the tip of the needle. Here you can see the needle compressing the tissue and then accessing the uh, vein directly. We always use a micropuncture needle, micropuncture sheath, and the micropuncture wire. Once you've gained access, as you can see here, uh, we will size this up to uh, per, uh, place a hemostatic uh, sheath. And through that, we'll then go ahead and do the ascending uh, venogram on the left side. Here you can see the micropuncture wire being introduced into the needle. This will replace with a sheath with a little skin neck to make it easier to actually introduce it. We'll then place a Benson wire and over the Benson wire uh, we will confirm its location and then place the uh, sheath with the hemostatic valve that we're going to actually uh, work through. So once we have the uh, sheath in place we will then do an ascending venogram This is done with a hand injection. That's the sheath for the micropuncture kit. Uh, now we're going to see the ascending venogram. Ascending venogram shows that there's very little anti-grade flow into the inferior vena cable. It's not completely occluded. Massive presacral and uh, paravertebral collaterals. So clearly she had near total occlusion um, of the vein. We had also planned to do a left renal venogram at the same time. And so the wire was first of all advanced up um, into the inferior vena cava. Uh, here we can see it actually advances over the contralateral iliac vein, then advance a burn catheter, uh, pull the wire back, deflect the catheter up the inferior vena cava. And over that wire, we will then advance the uh, catheter. We changed it out actually for a C2 catheter, which is my catheter of choice for accessing the left renal vein. And then we tilted the table um, so that there was some um, reverse Trendelenburg. And once we're in that position, we'll get the catheter in the re renal vein. We actually, there was no evidence of, of significant reflux. So at that point in time, we came back down and not actually uh, did an intravascular ultrasound. You see there's almost complete obliteration of the um, left iliac venous is compressed behind that um, iliac artery. And at that point, we I can also mark this on the screen. You can see the ibis catheter going uh, backwards and forwards, confirming the confluence of the iliac veins and the inferior vena cava. We elected uh, to choose an 18 by 9 wall stent. Uh, go big and go long are the kind of rules here. It is possible to displace these stents. And so we had marked on the screen where the confluence is. You have to project this into the inferior vena cava. Um, again, uh, there is a point in no return where you're committed to deploying this, but usually start high, float out the uh, wall stent and pull it down into position. It needs to project at least two to three centimeters in the inferior vena cava. Um, you can see we've chosen a long one. We've got to be careful not to deploy the back end of it in the sheath, which we didn't. Once the stent has been deployed, uh, uh, you can see it's still fairly compressed. And we opted to go ahead and balloon this. Of course, we'd always planned to balloon this. You've got to be really careful as you bring the balloon up. You don't catch on the back end of the wall stent. It's one of the reasons for using a long wall stent. It is possible with a short wall stent to catch your balloon on the back end of the stent and displace the wall stent up into the uh, inferior vena cava. Mm -hmm. So that's what we actually used. Uh, we then use a series of balloons. We started off with a 12 balloon and went up to a 16 balloon um, and then repeated the intravascular ultrasound. So a series of balloon dilation is going to take place. <coughs> uh, we usually start off right in the area of the compression, uh, first and foremost. And then work with proximal and distal. You can see that still weren't too convinced and so we came back in with a bigger balloon. 
and dilated up to 16. And after we'd done that, we actually uh, then did the completion intravascular ultrasound. And the maximum diameter was still only about 10 millimeters, but I uh, was a little anxious about going up much higher. And so here is the final completion IVUS shown in Phoebe Nicaba. The stent, a little free floating, nicely closed through the stenosis. And as we come more proximally, it's again free floating. It's really common to see that. Uh, we thought that was satisfactory and we terminated the case. Thank you.